Okay, meanwhile, this is that this is one of those weird stories about the human condition, frankly. Um sex dolls have have go what does this what the hell does this have to do with politics? I'll tell you. Sex doll, you know, in, in Dublin, it's legal to run a, bar, a brothel, as is, is the case in, I think, probably most European countries. And so this brothel in Dublin has bought one of these uh, 7, 10, $12,000 or 12,000 pound, British pound uh, sex dolls. They've got new, fancy, expensive ones that sort of look like some weird 14-year-old's vision of an attractive female. Um and I'm not exact. I, you know, I mean that exactly as I said it. I mean, the the article is over at uh, I think it's the the Independent. And uh, what's what's interesting? It, it, they're renting it out for eighty pounds, about a hundred dollars an hour. And they've got no shortage of customers. And it's not just people who are you know, who have a hard time with human interaction, people who may be disabled or autistic or something like that. It's uh, just, you know, well, they refer to them as punters, which is, what's that word mean in Britishism? I'm not sure. <laughs> I think it has to do with playing soccer, but I don't know. Anyhow, it's, it's, uh, so, uh, some say, the, uh, but there's some interesting things. You know, some scientists have even warned that there is a danger that the pleasure bots could lead to a decrease in real human relationships. And this is, this is where this is one of the uh, one of the comments. Uh, another one says, "At least it's a cheaper date." All right, and it gets a little more explicit than that. But, you know, what does this say about the, the direction that we as a human race are going? I mean, it's, it's, you know, first it was addiction to substances, right? We, you know, we got addicted to, to, to opiates and cocaine and all. I'm talking, you know, arc of human history here. And then, and, and, and typically drug addictions are like, you know, drugs are a, a, a super distilled form of reality. So the reality would be you have to chew down four or five opium poppies or make them into tea to get slightly knotted out. But if you mix it with certain chemicals and purify it and refine it, you can turn it into morphine and you can shoot it up and bang, get high. Okay, that's, and, and so a, a natural substance that's only very, very mildly addictive, opium, becomes an unnatural science that's highly addictive, heroin. Now, you could argue we've done the exact same thing with reality and television. The television is, is a drug that concentrates reality so that, you know, a one-day period becomes three minutes, uh, a week becomes five minutes. Uh, you can see somebody 20 feet away and hear every word they're saying or 100 yards away and hear every word they're saying. Suddenly you zoom up on them, you're right there, Sometimes, suddenly you're not. It's like, it's not reality. It's it's. It's a concentrated form of reality. And so it becomes addictive. Um, same thing with our, with our cell phones. Now here, you know, I can, I can uh, FaceTime with somebody. I can tweet with somebody. I can IM with somebody. Are you really connecting with that person? Well, some would say yes. Yes, you know, some of my most meaningful interrelation, you know, relationships have been online. And I, you know, and I would say I'm one of those people. I mean, I ran these forums on CompuServe for years back before there was an internet. And the people that I got to know in those forums, uh, many of them to this day are still very close friends. Even though I doubt I've seen them in person more than a d half a dozen or a dozen times in my whole entire life. They're very close friends. I, I interact with several of them literally daily. So where does reality and, and something that's unreal and potentially pathological begin, you know, this addiction thing. And could sex robots actually produce more sex addiction? Or is that even a thing? Or is it, you know, are they really just more appropriate for, for people who are just, you know, highly dysfunctional in terms of relations with human beings? Or is the whole thing a stupid idea? You know, would you have sex with a robot? I mean, I'm, I'm looking at myself right now thinking, no, no interest. 
But uh, when I was 14 years old, my answer might have been very different. And at, at least, you know, one time out of curiosity. And, you know, maybe more than you want to know. I'm sorry, but it's like, what, what you know, what does this mean? Where is this going? And uh, this is in Dublin. There's a, you know, brothels are legal in Dublin. Brothels, as I said, brothels are, deal, are legal throughout, you know, much of the world, certainly most of Europe. Here in the United States, they're only legal in Vegas. Or, you know, but is it illegal to have sex with a robot? Is it illegal to pimp out a robot? Could we be seeing a whole brand new chain of robot? Oh, geez, this is getting wild. By the way, I should add uh, on the on the sex robot thing, just you know, in the event anybody wants to talk about it, that they make uh, male sex robots as well as female ones. Uh, they sell at the at a ratio of about ten to one. Um, there's more demand for the female ones than the male ones, but that's although if you look at if you if you consider uh, vibrators robots. Um, uh, sex toys for women vastly outnumber sex toys for men in terms of product sold. So for what it's worth. Anyway, uh, <laughs> this is, I, I, I don't know why we went off on this. But. You know, on, on my whole riff about um, when I was talking about sex robots, and the, 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 the context that I was putting that was actually a very, very serious one. If you were to look into the, the living rooms of people during prime time, uh, and you, you, you see a family, you see a bunch of people sitting there and they're watching, let's say, for example, Seinfeld. They're making a comeback right now, or they're bringing back the reruns or whatever. Um, the, 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 the four characters who play in Seinfeld have relationships with each other and others in the show like most people don't have. They have uh, friendship and intimacy and understanding of each other at a level that most people don't have. Or if they do, it's in a very, very limited area. And they have fascinating lives, doing amazing things. I mean, you know, mundane pedestrian things, but still, it's fascinating. And so here you have a bunch of people, Americans, watching their drug of choice, this distilled reality of television, and this was my point about the sex bots, is are they distilled reality or are they, or are they merely a novelty? Right? Or is it just some passing fad? Um, because if it's distilled reality, and I would say, again, porn is the same thing, people watching porn, um, that, that they are, it, it's, it's like heroin. It, it is distilled reality. It's concentrated reality. Seinfeld, distilled, concentrated reality. And so what we do is we disconnect ourselves from real reality. We disconnect ourselves from the real human beings around us. We disconnect ourselves from looking out the window and looking at the sky and just thinking, oh my God, what a beautiful world I'm in. This is a sacred moment and a sacred place. We disconnect ourselves from all that and throw ourselves into this drug, whether it's opiates, whether it's television, whether it's Twitter or social media, or, you know, I mean, whether it's game, interactive game playing, role playing games, whatever it may be, these are all reality distilled. They're not real reality. They're, they're a distillation that resembles reality and done so in a way that produces essentially an addiction, an addiction response. And so, anyhow, that, that was my. Uh, that was the context in which I wanted to put this. I, th I thought it was an, an interesting one.